Party on, Todd. Party on, Sal. Rock on. Rock on. Well, welcome back, Party on John Casters, to another episode of the Party on John Cast, where we talk coffee, what we're drinking, music, and theology. This is Reverend Sal Samarco, a uh, ordained teaching elder in the Presbyterian Church of USA in the Presbytery of Newton in the Validated Ministry of Chaplaincy. And I'm Todd uh, Laddick. I'm a, a pastor, uh, a ordained elder serving in the uh, Greater New Jersey United Methodist Church, or United Methodist Church of Greater New Jersey, or however you like to swing that. Mm-hmm. And I'm serving on higher ground than Sal. It's the only higher ground I give him. Short of divine providence. That's right. <laughs> so. Awesome. And today we actually have a pretty awesome guest with us. We do have an awesome guest, and before uh, we we introduce him, uh, I believe, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we met on Twitter because of a, a common liking of the band Demon Hunter, which you've never, ever, ever heard me talk about on this sh- uh, never, podcast before. Never. It's not his favorite band or anything. No, no, not, not, not. Not a big fan or anything of that. But anyway, uh, we had a, 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 a like. I think he liked something I posted, and I saw his name and said, "Whoa, that is awesome!" And I went to his Twitter account and followed him, and uh, he followed me back, and uh, it's the it's grown from there. And he followed me, and he followed the the podcast. And- yeah, so it's just been a whole happy follow fest. Yeah. So uh, we'd like to introduce the Reverend Leviathan. How are you doing? How's it going? Good. Going well, man. So, Reverend Leviathan, uh, that name I have to say really uh, caught my eye when I when like I said when I saw you you like something I tweeted about Demon Hunter and I said whoa and I had to check out your, <laughs> you know how it is on Twitter you have to check out the Twitter to the Twitter account and uh, and I said this is pretty this guy's pretty cool so I followed you and uh, yeah so. Um, uh, where where are you located? Uh, I am technically from Wisconsin since that's where I was born, but I've been in Kentucky, right around the Lexington Georgetown area for the majority of my life. Oh wow, cool! Uh, by the way, at some point in time, uh, I, I feel that uh, Kentucky is in my future, at least to hit the Bourbon Trail. Nice. <laughs> and uh, my denomination has their headquarters in Louisville. Yes, it does. True story. True story. So, um, we will we will get into a little more about who you are in a little bit. Um, uh, but we we like to start off with a certain Hebrews segment. Hey, Todd. Yes, Sal. How do you know that God likes coffee? How? Because he wrote about it in the Book of Hebrews. But um, every time. <laughs> Yeah, um, that joke, as old and tired as it may be. As I said in our anniversary (laughs) episode, you'll hear it for at least the next year, (laughs) as that's how long our website is up for. Uh, So basically here we we go over what we are drinking, typically coffee, sometimes whiskey, sometimes beer, beer, sometimes, uh, well, who knows, that's, you know. But right now I am... Uh, drinking a because we're talking uh, because Reverend Leviathan is our guest and we are uh, talking uh, children of the night uh, we are going to I'm, I'm drinking death wish coffee have you ever had that kind sir uh, all I can say right now is oh the irony because <laughs> I cannot stand coffee in any way shape or form I can't even stand the smell of coffee oh wow Okay. So, yeah, my uh, good friend of mine told me that my baptism doesn't count because I hate coffee. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, I don't know what it is, man, but I've just I've never been a coffee drinker. <laughs> you know what? You, you don't like coffee, but you like brew, and so it's you, you like a different form of brew. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and do you like Guinness? Yes, yes, I, I definitely like some darker beers. Then you're then you're in. <laughs> I will I will go ahead and say as a Presbyterian that your baptism is valid. Then, <laughs> if you drink Guinness, if you drink Guinness, you're 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 just valid. Period. All over all over the place. But but the other the other thing is is if you haven't tried it yet, 
um, and you don't like, I know you don't like coffee and you want to feel adventurous someday, Starbucks Nitro Cold Brew, if they have it where you're at, uh, tastes a lot like Guinness. With Interesting. The, with the caffeine. Yeah, there's something about they add nitro to it, uh, ni- you know, nitrogen to it, and that cuts the bitterness of the coffee and makes it smooth like Guinness. And, and it has a head like Guinness, too. Mm. It's really kind of crazy. But it does the opposite of, I mean, it does, in one sense, it does the same thing as Guinness does. It makes you pee. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it, it wakes you up as well. So. You you can try it and maybe if you feel adventurous, try it and let us know if it, yay or nay. All right, <laughs> so, sounds good. So I'm drinking Death Wish, which is uh, exactly what it sounds. And he's actually drinking it from his haunted mansion. Oh, he, mug. yes, I'm drinking from my haunted mansion mug. I, I'm a huge Disney fan, and my favorite place in in all of Disney is the haunted mansion. And so I happened to see this cool mug while we were down there, and I'm like, oh, that's mine, and that's going in the church office. So, um, so that's what we're, that's what I'm drinking. Death Wish. It's super duper caffeinated coffee that, uh, actually tastes remarkably not bitter being that it's named Death Wish, as strong as it is. but, it, but like within like a minute and a half of drinking it, you can feel your eyes dilating. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's almost so caffeinated. It might, it might be close to being illegal. <laughs> Alrighty. It just seemed appropriate for tonight. I won't be able to sleep all night long, but that's okay. So, uh, what are you drinking, uh, Sal? So, I'm actually drinking uh, Starbucks Colombian coffee. It's a medium roast coffee. I'm drinking it from my Starbucks mug that I had in my car. Um, So, it's a nice medium, not super bitter, um, not as as strong tasting as their Pike Place coffee, but a legit good medium roast coffee. Pretty legit, yeah. And I'm actually drinking it uh, without milk in it, which is... Not normal for me. Wow, you're drinking a medium roast from Starbucks that you've never had before, and you're drinking it without milk. You're no, brave. That's that's. Yeah. But that one is your, good. I've had that good. one. Yeah, that's good. And okay, so uh, Revolith- Leviathan, um, what are you drinking? What brew is in your hands right now? I am drinking Ale Eight One, which is a Kentucky soft drink. It's kind of like a ginger ale, mm. and yeah, it's. Uh, you either love it or you hate it, and people who hate it call it Kentucky Swamp Water. <laughs> and, and yeah, I've been drinking it for as long as I can remember. So that's the one thing that I'm going to miss about Kentucky when I move. <laughs> okay, are you moving soon? No, thank God. Okay. okay, but whenever that day comes, you're going to miss it. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like being from Jersey and moving south and never ever being able to have taylor ham or pork roll though in south carolina now it's it's becoming a thing really yeah Jer- jersey's wearing guess. that's because a lot of jersey people There's are moving enough jersey people moving, <laughs> there. moving down there yep so um but yeah yeah totally can appreciate that and so it's kind of like a ginger ale yeah oh, huh. yeah kind of a sweeter ginger ale and it's uh made with actual with real ginger and a little bit of uh citrus and a few secret ingredients that they are still very protective over. Oh, so. sure, sure. Which, uh, hate it or love it, they're not going to give up their secrets. No, they even uh, altered their formula a little bit when they came out with 20 ounces because Pepsi distributes the 20 ounces around Kentucky and they changed it so Pepsi wouldn't steal the ingredient. So the <laughs> Ale 8 in the 20 ounce bottle tastes slightly different than the one in the glass bottle. I am curious. I am curious. And is it only is it only sold in Kentucky? Uh if I remember correctly, the they recently actually did some kind of deal with Cracker Barrel and I think you might be able to find it at Cracker Barrel. A Cracker Barrel. We, we have, have a Cracker Barrel right in Ledgewood. We do. Yeah. And you know, so you might be able to find it there. Or Roxbury. It's I actually Roxbury. just googled it and you can buy it on Amazon. <laughs> you can buy it on Amazon. Yeah. You can get everything on Amazon. Yeah. Okay, so that is our He Brew sec- segment. And now it is time for our most excellent music segment. That's pretty shocking every time. We apologize. Yeah, you, you can you can literally see uh, if you you can literally see um, Sal just like wince 
Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so today, rather than um, rather than uh, review different songs, we're actually going to review a song. And and if we have your permission, uh, Rev Leviathan, I would love to be able to uh, play it for our guests to hear. Yeah, that's fine. Great. Okay. So we're going to play that song. Greetings, mammal. Reverend Leviathan mobs out long. Oh my god. Becky, look at those goths. I mean, they're so scary. They look like they should be part of the Adams family or the monsters or going to some weird guy's funeral. OMG. Chilling with my homies in the cemetery A lot of normal people, man, they think that that is scary But we like hanging out with those that already died Cause they don't judge or give us crap about the way that we ride The others staring cross themselves as I walk by When I step into a church, the congregation gives the evil lie They think I'm wicked and they judge me without reason Trying to cast the demons at me like my name was Legion Labeled as demonic just because of my style And my scary looking Jesus hating son of Belial We be dressing in all black and invoking a lot of fear Sporting every bit of our talk romantic Yeah, we got the vampire fan we got spikes and chains We got Bella Lugosi running through our veins Listen to them, children of the night Now check the music I'm making the rhymes I bust on this mic G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-4-L-I-F-E G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T. H-I-C Gothic for life Says the angel spit is his fave While the death rocker bumps the old school 45 grave But the rev, I love all the flame Industrial, got the billy whore, punk, and dark wave Chillin' at the bar in darkest goth nights Jammin' with the vampires underneath the black lights Singin' along to my favorite tunes Got me howlin' out like Cheney Jr. during the full moon But when I was bed, I just can't get that song out my head Listenin' to the OG Ross Williams be fillin' me with dread To the Bauhaus, everybody dancin' Then everybody stopped when he spun Marilyn Manson G to the O T. H I C G to the O T. H I C G to the O T. H I C four L I F E. G to the O T. H I C G to the O T. H I C G to the O T. H I C Gothic for life. Suddenly I heard a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. That's my boy Edgar Allan Poe. The normal people always hating, thinking that I worship Satan. And the preppy girls are prison walking by and always dissing. They say it ain't Halloween and other things are so so mean. They call me weirdo, call me freak. I hear about eight days a week. I'm the nerd that you bullied all throughout school. I'm the reject that you labeled as uncool. I'm the guy in the back of the class that you whisper about every time I walk past in the hallways, catching dirty looks always. That's when I embrace the dark. Darkness hid myself from the light And it was there that I was found by children of the night Then I donned the black clothes and applied the eyeliner Been a goth ever since and I ain't been no finer G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-4-L-I-F-E G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C-G to the O-T H-I-C gothic for life right this song goes out to all the gods of the world cyber gods romantic gods gothabillies rivet heads even the gothic elitist prick that thinks i'm not goth because i'm spitting a rap this song is for you <laughs> you're right mom it was just a phase not awesome Pretty rocking, right? It's a good, a great song. And uh, that song, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I didn't realize that you were a musician, man. Uh, I, that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I released an album back in 2008 called Eden's Graveyard. And that was just a straight up like industrial goth album. And before that, I was in a band called When Light Fades. Mm. And we did kind of a little bit of a punk metal kind of thing. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah, after, after going 10 years without recording any music, I was kind of going crazy. 
And after kind of rediscovering my love for underground hip hop, I was like, you know what? I was like, I need to try to fuse these two scenes in my life with my music. And that's when I decided to go ahead and do this. But because I do not trust myself to write hip hop because my knowledge of hip hop is so slim, I've actually got other producers who write the music and then I'm pretty much responsible for the lyrics. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let me tell you. When okay, so so the 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 song starts off, and I'm listening to this. I'm like, I dig it, I dig it, and then all of a sudden you start rapping, and I'm like, oh, oh. my oh. god, wow, that is, and the rap is super solid, tight. Like mm-hmm. like what what I appreciated about it was like you know how to rap. Right. <laughs> like I didn't feel like it, at any point in that song, like you can always tell when there's there are people who know how to rap, and then there are the people that are trying desperately hard to rap, and they fail. Mm-hmm. Like you totally busted like tight rhymes in that entire song. And then the ending is like one of the, my favorite endings to any song I've ever heard. Yeah. And to that, it would you say to that elitist Gothic prick? <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause I know who they are. <laughs> oh yes, sir. <laughs> I actually, uh, I was listening to the, uh, track this afternoon and then I, Saw that you had the Eden's graveyard, and I started to listen. I said, "Yeah, this is this is legit electronic, yeah, industrial uh, tracks." So. Yeah, and and I'm uh, I don't think this is a big secret for most people. Maybe some of our listeners wouldn't know, but I'm a huge like goth industrial uh, fan. I, obviously, a metal fan. A lot of times, those those go hand in hand. Um, not a very Christian band, but one of my favorite, like Gothic metal bands is Moonspell. In fact, they're the antithesis of a Christian band, (laughs) but, but they're just super like talented and good. And I just love, uh, darker Gothic music. I, I, when I was in high school back in those days, um, I was in a goth band. I wore black fishnets, nail polish. You know, um, there are some people who who are in my life today who remember me that way um, and just do a double take at the fact that I'm pastoring a church. But you know what? That hasn't changed. That's still me. I mean, there are parts of me that have changed from that time to now, but that's still who I am. It's still in me. Um, I have... Uh, actually, a poem I wrote, I have a part of a poem I wrote bouncing around my screen as a screensaver right now, uh, mesmerizing black, shining brightly, hanging on tightly to the edge of life and death. And it goes on. Um, but that's just always been a part of who I am. Um, and a while back, I don't ever review or talk about my own music, but heck, why not? Let's let's break some rules today. I actually wrote a song myself. Um uh, I was I was a youth pastor and there was a girl who was going through some really, really dark and hard times and experiencing the judgment that goes along with that. I'm sure you know what that is, Rev Le- Leviathan. Uh, yeah. And, and so um, it, it really inspired me to write this song, which turned out to be a goth metal song and uh, kind of more goth with some emo screaming in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll post it onto our uh, episode notes for you to listen to. Uh, one, of, one of the rare times I'll do that. But, it, it, you know, it's, it's a song I'm very proud of. I'll even post the video for it because I have a video for it. Okay. It's pretty rocking. Anyway, um, that was pretty biased for me to say that, but I think it's pretty rocking. Um, so anyway, yeah. So, so we're going to – that was a long introduction to say we're going to talk about um, Gothic for Life, which is the song that they just listened to. Uh, what inspired – well, you said what inspired you to write that, that you had you had been in those bands and you hadn't done anything for 10 years and, and you kind of went stir crazy. And I certainly understand how that goes. Yeah, they, I actually wrote Gothic for Life about over 10 years ago. Wow. And wow. it started out as a joke. <laughs> like all I, like this is when I had I had stopped listening to a lot of underground hip hop for about a decade. And I just randomly decided, you know what? I think it'd be funny if I wrote a rap song about the goth scene. <laughs> so I actually, I wrote the song and the original title was just we be goths. I mean, it was not <laughs> nearly, you know, not to toot my own horn, but it wasn't nearly as good as it is now. And like, so after I started getting stir crazy and I just, I never forgot about that song. I was like, you know what? I need to try to actually record this. Mm. So with a little bit of rewriting and some touching up of the lyrics, Gothic for life was born. That's, <laughs> That is awesome. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that that's amazing. Like, so that's something that you wrote ten years ago in a different season in your life, and uh, you kind of tweaked it and brought it to life today, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like it's it's a legit like celebration of the gothic subculture, but oh, it's it also I made it very purposefully tongue in cheek. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It, there is a delicate balance between the homage that you're making to the goth culture and the tongue in cheek kind of. Um, approach that you take in it and it, it, it there is a delicate balance there and it's perfect i think mm-hmm. it really is what what, do you, what are your thoughts sal i was gonna say you, you you skirt that line pretty pretty well and it um you don't go over that line of of you know being too campy or too um in your face with the either either aspect of it yeah yeah i've had about i think four people tell me that it's it reminds them of like if Weird Al had done a song about goth yes. instead of white and nerdy. Absolutely. Yes. And my wife hates Weird Al, so she hates that I've told her that four people have told her told me that. <laughs> Does she like the song, though? Oh, yeah, she loves the song, except for the very end. She she doesn't like the little what, what, and I just I threw that in there just to be funny. <laughs> and, like, she she hates that. She's like, you don't do that. And I'm like, so? But it's I do. A, it's a song. I'm just having fun with it. I do it for the song. What did we say? We're breaking rules, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. That that song is absolutely excellent. So what else do you have in coming up in the future? Because it sounds like you've got a whole project going on here. Uh, I am in the process of hopefully getting a uh, an EP recorded. Uh, the name of the EP is Corpse of an Angel, which is an homage to my first band, One Light Fades, we had a song called Corpse, mm. and that's what that's an homage to. And uh, it should have at least five tracks. Uh, the second song is actually going to be released next month, and it's called Slit His Throat. And uh, the title is definitely turning a few heads with people in the Christian scene who know me. Uh, but that's actually 100% planned. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. it'll be kind of shocking to people when they actually hear the lyrics and it's not what they think. Of course, yeah, sure. And, uh, Another song is going to be uh, it's Vampire Friar, which is uh, <laughs> yes. kind of a humorous, fictionalized look at my time in the friary. And uh, and then a couple other songs that are very, uh, very, very personal that I just I won't even reveal the titles right now. OK, but okay. yeah, those are those are definitely the tracks that we're going for. Wow. wow. OK. And so uh, and then so this will all be put into an album. Uh, it's going to be a five track EP, EP and then okay, depending on how that goes, you know, that'll determine whether or not I either release another EP or actually come out with another album. Gotcha. 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 Well, I'm looking forward to it. Like the second, the, the second you tweeted that you had a song, I listened to it and said, okay, I'm buying that. <laughs> for, <clears throat> for those youngsters out there that don't know what an EP is, that's an extended play. It comes from the time we had it records. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Remember those days. We do. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, there were some uh, CD EPs as well, uh, yep. but now we just have you know digital pretty Video. much. Yep. But awesome. mine's definitely going to be on CD. I am a collector. I do not like just digital. Right. So yeah, this will be available in digital and CD format. Great. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm I'm that way too. Like if if there are if it's a band I love, I have to have I have to have at least at least CD if not both. I usually go for both because uh, I don't necessarily want to carry a CD around everywhere I go, but uh, but I can't just have digital for the bands that I actually follow and, and love. I mean, if it's if it's like, oh, this is okay music, I'll listen to it on Apple Music, no harm, no foul. But if, if I love the band, I've got to have both. Yeah. Yep. Definitely with you on that. Um, awesome. So that is our most excellent music segment. Um, but... That segment is actually going to kind of be a good segue into, into our main topic. our main topic, Children of the Night, and it'll become clear why we titled it this. Uh, I, I am a big Jess. I'm going to put this out there. I'm a huge Bella Lugosi fan. Listen to them, Children of the Night. What music they make! Listen to them. The children of the night. What music they make. 
Um, see now that so. makes me see now <laughs> that makes me think of at least Todd's impression makes me think of uh, the Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah, one. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, we got one, one podcaster. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two, two podcasters. Oh, three, three podcasters. Ah, uh, ah, uh. and then you gotta get the thunder, you know, yeah. That's bringing back childhood memories. Okay, so, um, back on point. Uh, we are calling this Children of the Night in honor of you, uh, Rev Le- Leviathan, uh, because, um, you you are a Christian, and if I'm not mistaken, Roman Catholic, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so you are a, a Christian, a Roman Catholic, but you're also goth for life. And so I found I – mean, that, believe it or not, is not surprising to me because I – while I don't um, necessarily – dress every day like a goth there are days i do uh sal's witnessed those mm-hmm. uh there you know i like i tend to like black i you know i have i still i still have my doc martens <laughs> and you know like so so i do do that at times but i don't always do that but but i am a goth at heart i always have been and um so it doesn't surprise me that goth and christian can go together but i would bet my bottom dollar that it surprises a heck of a lot of Christians Christians. that goth and Christianity could even be in the same room together, let alone in the same person. Oh, yes. Yeah, most most definitely. So as a segue from the last segment to this one, you said that you were in a friary. So before we get there, I want to make sure we go kind of in order. Like, how did you get into goth? What brought you into goth? Well, I mean, even as a teenager, I was always kind of amazed and enamored with, like, gothic aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So I always liked the look, but I was not too familiar with the music, which is how the scene was born. Mm -hmm. So then when I actually started listening to goth music, like, I just finally realized that that was the music that, like, really spoke to me at that time in my life. Okay. And so I just started discovering more and more musicians and out of nowhere, I just kind of, you know, my look slowly started getting more and more into the Gothic aesthetics. Yeah. And that's basically where I found my place because even before that, you know, I was always kind of a reject, Mm. you know, all all the way back to elementary school. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the kid who, the fat kid with cooties that was always picked on by the beautiful people, Mm. you know, and mainstream society and so then finally, I'm like, you know what? Here's a place for all of us who are different, who don't have to change. And, you know, this philosophy of being oneself and embracing the darkness, not necessarily Satan or evil, <laughs> but embracing the darker aspects as just a part of life. You know, I just found all of that very fascinating I, and it I, spoke to me. I think that's a that's a I. I've never was really into goth. I was always kind of the, the skater punk metal thrash metal kid but there's that common theme of this is a community where the outcasts and the ragamuffins can come together and say yeah we're not the perfect people but i got this awesome community behind me yeah different scene but same same things kind of lead you into that scene of finding who you are and embracing it to to the detriment of you know to whatever to everybody else you know Mm -hmm. like like no one's going to accept me for who i am so if i don't accept me for who i am then i'm pretty much all but lost um, and that's kind of um, my story. I mean, I'm sure our stories are different in, in ways, but, but my story is very similar, you know, uh, nerd mm. geek freak, you know, picked on chubby, yep. ch- chubby kid. You know, I wasn't all that fat, I- ironically, but kids called me fat. Yep. And, and so that became my self image, you know, this fat kid that nobody liked, yep. um, uh, my, my sermon, uh, this coming Sunday actually is talks about that a little bit, you know, like I went to. I went to church with kids that were nice to me at church, but that was the extent of it. They were nice, (laughs) but they didn't necessarily invite me to sit at their table. They didn't invite me over to parties at their house. They didn't, you know, so I was always kind of on the outside of things. And I got into goth because there were people in that scene that accepted me for who I was. I was depressed. I wrote really dreary, dark poems that no one else got. And these kids got it. And it slowly but surely became who I was. Right. 
similar story with me. I was kind of the the shy, chubby kid who got picked on and kind of got into BMX and skateboarding and martial arts because they were individual sports, but they were activities you get to get together and bond with people over like, oh, yeah, we're this is something that sets us apart but brings us together truth be told uh rev leviathan uh sal is a a a geek nerd who can kick people's ass yes (laughs) that's a good combination by the way i always always joke that i will lovingly and pastorally kick your ass okay (laughs) he's what are you a third or fourth belt third degree black third third degree black belt in taekwondo yeah oh wow so um (laughs) Yeah, um, you know, you got to watch out for these quiet types. Quiet ones, you got to watch out for. <laughs> so, so, okay, so that brought you into uh, the, the goth scene. What, what music in that time period, what music were you really digging? Uh, one of the first goth bands that I actually heard is called The Awakening. Mm-hmm. And it's actually kind of a one man band. He does all the stuff himself on his albums. And, uh, like the awakening really hit me they're awesome and it's lyrically and musically you know and uh i just i fell in love with the dude's voice Mm. and you know also there was a group called uh savior machine i i love them yeah okay yeah so savior machine was another one that i discovered and thought it was amazing and what amazed me even more was the fact that they were christian and i'm like wow i thought christians only made really crappy music (laughs) true story (laughs) historically yeah so like so then when i when i found them i was like all right so then i started delving deeper into like the the history of god and i started discovering the old school death rock bands like christian death and uh bauhaus 45 grave a lot of the early pioneers and joy division so like i just i kind of went back because i was so interested in the goth scene you know i went back and learned almost everything about it that i could Mm -hmm. so yeah they were all really the first ones and then i found my you know my love affair with industrial which uh began with circle of dust and uh clank okay yeah uh, so yeah, there was there was that as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, and uh, do you listen to anything like um, like you know Bauhaus, Nosferatu, any of those types of bands? I like a little bit of Bauhaus. You know, some people look at me in amazement and tell me that I'm not goth because I don't love Bauhaus. <laughs> but uh, like, I only have a couple of their CDs because I'm not the biggest fan of theirs. Like when it comes to old school. I would say I'm a bigger fan of Christian Death oh, and maybe oh. Sisters of Mercy. Oh, I love both of them. Yeah, and, Christian Death uh, is awesome. You know, Dead Artist Syndrome. Roz is, Williams. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and Dead Artist Syndrome is a huge favorite of mine. He's uh, Brian Healy. He's known as the the Godfather. Roz Williams actually called him the Godfather of Christian Goth. Yeah. And he uh, has very classic sounding Sisters of Mercy type stuff, but also talks about the faith. Without being in your face with right. the lyrics and pre- too preachy, right. and he does a good job of calling out a lot of the BS that happens in Christian America with the song by the same title. Okay, yeah, wow. Um, oh, he has a song titled "Christian America." Yes, awesome. <laughs> and it's yeah, the chorus of that song is "Praise the Lord, we'll have fun in the sun, we'll use our Bibles like a loaded gun." Shut down all who disagree with our bad theology. It's manifest destiny, Christian America. <laughs> yes. So yes. yeah, he he did a good job of speaking out on stuff like that. That was that's close to my heart to this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How about um, have you heard uh, uh, Switchblade Switchblade Symphony? Yes, I I've got a couple of Switchblade Symphony CDs. Her voice, like I find their voice and uh, her voice and and the harmonies are just so like hypnotic. Oh yeah, yeah. I I when it comes to like the newer sounding goth, like I like Switchblade Symphony, and uh, I haven't heard anything new by them in a while. But I love the Crew Shadows. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the newer sounding stuff that I listen to as well. The other, the other secret that I, I I may have outed on this show. Oh, I did because you're uh, because Allison critiqued me on not explaining what it is. Ah, uh, yes. But I I for t- while it, while I was a teenager uh, into um, you know uh, mid twenties about I would say about eight eight or so years of my life I was Wiccan. 
And uh, there's a goth band who also, also happens to be a pagan band called Incubus Succubus, with, spelt with Ks. And I, I love them. I, even to this day, even as a Christian, I love them. I mean, I don't subscribe to their, their religious uh, beliefs, uh, but I don't have to. Their music rocks. So that's, that's one thing I, I, I find. Here's shithouse theology, right? Okay. Um, shithouse theology. <laughs> <laughs> There's a toilet flush going to be in there. So, uh, but, but seriously, like Christians have gotten so enclosed in their own circle, in their own little bubble, that like you have to think, look, sound, and be exactly like them in order for them to deal with you, talk to you, or anything, you know. And and that is not what Christ was. Right. Well, it's become a it's become a an adjective. Christian pop or Christian oh, yeah. metal or yeah. Christian goth, where you just have to take the secular thing and make it Christian. Yeah. Instead of just letting the content. Be Christian, yeah. Which is which is exactly what you said, Rev Leviathan, when you when you said that. Um, yeah, you know, like like most Christian music sucks <laughs> because yeah. there's there's authentic Christian music, which is it's in in and of itself what it is, and and that I appreciate. But then there's the Christian music that has to be like, oh, we can't listen to Marilyn Manson because Marilyn Manson's evil, so we're gonna come out with a band that sounds like Marilyn Manson, but we suck. <laughs> and. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean that. That's you know the Christians are notorious for doing that, and I, I I think you know what. There's nothing wrong with being Christian and proclaiming your faith through your art and your voice and your talent and whatnot, um, and and do that. But but be yourself. Don't don't be something else in order to dupe people into listening to you because that doesn't work. Yeah, I uh, you know no no hate on Skillet. But I will say that's something that I've kind of always thought about them because their first CD came out in the grunge era and they sound like the Christian ripoff of Nirvana. Yep. And yeah. then kind of it kind of got a little bit electronic when that became popular. And then it became like an industrial metal when that was popular. And they just they've changed it, their sound to fit the times like, OK, this is what's popular. So let's do this. And it's like Whereas, cookie cutter like, factory stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like most of the quote-unquote Christian bands that I listen to don't even like to refer to themselves as Christian bands because, you know, four Christians in a car doesn't make it a Christian car. <laughs> you know? Yes! And so, yeah, that's that's the thing with that. So most of them are actually, they talk about their faith and their lyrics, but they're also not putting it in your face like, hey, we're a Christian, and if you're not, you can go to hell. Right. That's why and I like, that's why I like about Demon Hunter, even. Yeah, and they, they do a really good job of not only uh, spreading the gospel, but also about talking about the darker sides of life and mm-hmm. you know telling people, hey, it's okay to have doubts about God. It's yeah, okay right. to you know have struggles in your faith. Yes. Like they they don't come out and say, hey, you can't have struggles in your faith. They say, yes, it's one hundred percent possible. Right. Whereas you have a lot of other other Christian bands. They'll come out with the same song, but it'll be all. It will always be positive in the end, <laughs> yes. you know. <laughs> Which, if you're going through that, in my in my times, that's never actually helped me hearing that. What helps me is when I hear another man of faith saying they're in the same spot that I'm at. Yeah, okay. that's what helps me. Not telling me that I'm going to get over it or get through it with God's mm-hmm. help. Seeing that someone is going through it with me, and that we can talk to each other about it. That is what you know mm-hmm. really helps me. Empathy. Empathy instead of sympathy. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for people who think that you have to end on a positive note, they've never read Psalm 88 because that psalm, that's the one psalm in the entire book that does not have anything positive to say. (laughs) (laughs) It has nothing positive to say. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 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 a good portion of Ecclesiastes. Everything is meaningless, like chasing the wind. <laughs> vanity. Everything's vanity. Yeah. yeah. You know, that reminds me. I have a good friend Eugene who um, uh, uh, he actually um, he wrote a song again about suicide um, called "Find Me," and uh, I'll post a link to that too. I, I know he won't mind that I do. But uh, it was just him on the piano and recording it. Again, we were dealing with kids who were going through serious issues, cutting, uh, suicidal thoughts, and and uh, and um, 
intentions and and you know when you when you minister to people who are going through those things and i personally went through those things myself uh as a teenager you you begin to realize that like you know people are crying out for help and they're falling through the cracks because they're not getting empathy they're getting sympathy if they're getting that at all and they may not even be getting that um and so he wrote the song find me uh and ended the song with uh I'm knocking on suicide as if suicide's the door. I'm knocking on suicide. And uh, people were upset with him because it didn't end happy. And he's like, but that's the point. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always end happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that. The, this, this song isn't to make you feel good about yourself. This song is to tell you wake up because mm -hmm. there are people under your noses who are about to do it. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a... Um in my in my ministry setting as a chaplain, I work in a secular environment, so I have leadership over me. And, you know, I was expected to give a devotional in the morning, so when I, during periods of doubt and grief, I would share theology that's based in suffering and grief, because not all theology is uh, sunshine and rainbow, rainbows. My yearly review, I was told that I needed to be more positive. <laughs> I was too negative. American Christianity. Yeah, I, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not Joel Osteen. <laughs> I actually mentioned him and slit his throat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, not joking. <laughs> no, I, I believe you're not joking, and I can't, I can't wait to hear it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, that that's, you know, that is what we're up against. And um, uh, so... You said that you were in a friary. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I was wasn't actually baptized a Catholic. Okay, I was baptized when I was sixteen at an interdenominational church, hmm. and later came into the Catholic Church when I was in college studying theology. Hmm. So, about two thousand ten, I I read uh, Dark Night of the Soul, mm -hmm. which is a, a really good uh, work by Saint John of the Cross. John of the Cross yeah. yeah. And after I read that, I, for some reason, I started thinking about religious life. And uh, this is coming from a guy who was 100 percent addicted to sex and relationships. And here I am actually contemplating a life of celibacy. Mm -hmm. So I was shocked, to say the least. <laughs> and uh, the more and more I talked to my friends, who almost none of them are Catholic, they were all like, yeah, I could definitely see you doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, crap. And so then I went to one of my former teachers who's an atheist. And when I told him I was doing it just to see what he would say, even he told me, he was like, I think you should really go for that. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, well, we may disagree religiously speaking, but I really admire that lifestyle. And I'm like, okay, I have an atheist telling me to look at a religious order. This has got to be a sign from God. So I started looking into it, and because I had only been Catholic for a few years, the only ones I was really familiar with were the uh, Benedictine monks. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I went to a monastery as like a come-and-see weekend. All monasteries and religious orders have that. Mm -hmm. um, I went there, and they told me that they couldn't accept me because I didn't have a college degree. And the reason being is because that monastery was actually connected to a school and all the monks there teach. Okay, that makes sense. So then I went to another monastery, and uh, the vocational director there also told me, like he said, he didn't see me as a monk, that he saw me as more of a friar. And I'm like, I didn't know what he meant. <laughs> so he told, me to look, he told me to look into the Franciscans. And I'm like, well, all right. So I did, and I'm like, wow, this is more of what I was looking for, because for people who don't know the difference, uh, the monks tend to be a lot more secluded, whereas friars tend to be a little bit more active. Mm -hmm. So that's I went in and looked into that, and <laughs> yeah, going, going into that is almost like joining the FBI. <laughs> Seriously, because I, I mean, like, I had to, I had to give proof of my baptism— I had to get a uh, recommendation from a priest who knew me. I had to get a, a physical, uh, a mental evaluation. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't play around. Wow. You know, and then when I when I went before the board, this is when I still had all my facial piercings. Okay. And they were still considering me. So, yeah, I ended up getting in, and uh, I decided to take out my facial piercings, and I 
I was completely fine with that, but they let me keep my earrings. So, but yeah, the, I spent a year in formation in uh, Cincinnati at St. Anthony Friary. Okay. Okay. And for that year, like it's one of the best years of my life. Okay. And the, I can tell you that the man who went in is not the one who came out. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah, because, I mean, even though in the end I realized that that wasn't my calling, I fought it. Like, I, I very desperately wanted to stay there. I mean, I was so sure of it that when I left for the friary, I seriously got rid of almost everything that I owned, mm. minus a few little things here and there. So when I realized it wasn't my calling, like, okay, no car, no money, <laughs> no furniture, no bed. Uh-huh. So I kind of had to start from scratch. Okay, mm. yeah. But... Yeah, that, that year there, I learned more about myself in that year than I had in a long time. Wow. And stuff that we really needed to be learned. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there's still not a doubt in my mind that God called me up there. It just wasn't for the reason I wanted. Mm-hmm. Very similar to when he called called uh, Jonah to speak preach in Nineveh. You know, yep. Jonah yep. wanted it to result in their damnation. Mm-hmm. God used it to result in their turning of hearts. Right, right. So and he was very angry when he, it didn't turn out like he like he wanted, and that's pretty much how it was with me. I was kind of upset that I was realizing that that wasn't my calling, and all of a sudden I came upon that uh, the passage in Matthew with the demoniac who was healed. Right, right. And he begs to stay there with to stay with Jesus. And what does he tell them? He he says, "No, go back home and tell them all that the Lord has done for you." That's right. right. Yep. And when I read that, that's what hit, that's when it hit me. I was like, all right, I'm making the right decision. I need to leave. And people who knew me before the friary and people who know me after are just like, you're a completely different person. Yeah. I mean, how can you go into such a committed spiritual, like a, a, a basically a, a committed spiritual journey dedicated to finding who you are in the Lord? You right. can't possibly spend a year doing that and come out the same person you were when you went in. I mean, right. Just yeah, and I mean, I came close to leaving really early because there were like we had like a evaluation. You had like a six month evaluation if you were there the whole six months, mm-hmm. where the community talks about things that they've noticed in you or things that needs to change. And after six months, they told me that I needed to, and I quote one of the friars. You know, he told me I needed to drop the goth shit. <laughs> so those were his exact words, and. <laughs> I was wow. like, okay. oh my gosh, like that hit me, yep. <laughs> you know, and I I was so upset with the kind of review that I got of people just pointing that out when I didn't think it was an issue. I was about to leave that night. Sure, sure. And like, I, I actually called up Brian Healy, who's the lead singer of uh, Dead Artist Syndrome. Mm-hmm. He and I, like, he was a musical icon and we ended up meeting and becoming friends. Oh, wow. So his opinion meant a lot to me. So when I told him, I was like, man, I was like, they're telling me to tone down the the gothic aspect of my life. And he was like, dude, so what if they're telling you to tone it down, buy a couple of colored t-shirts and wear one once a week. (laughs) And I was like, you're supposed to be on my side, you know? And then another friend of mine who is in a uh, goth band, uh, kind of a death rock called leper. uh, I spoke with him and I was telling him I was going to leave because of that. And he was like, you know, I'm urging you to stay. He was like, you're, you're not Shane the goth. You're Shane the servant of God. Mm, mm. And that's when it finally hit me that goth had actually become kind of a vanity to me. Okay, yeah. Wow. And like it, oh, it became more important for me that people knew I was a goth who just so happened to be Catholic rather than a Catholic who just so happened to be goth. Amen. Yeah, so absolutely. Finally, when that hit me, You know, that was a big wake up call. And I ended up toning down my appearance hardcore. I didn't forsake the scene or the music because that's not what they were asking me. Because one of the friars there, Father Frank, he actually came up to me one day and he was wearing his habit. He's like, Shane, let me ask you something. I'm like, what's that? And he took off his habit. And mind you, he had clothes under it. Uh, (laughs) Good. (laughs) He said, he said, am I any less a Franciscan if I'm not wearing this habit? And I was like, oh, no. And he said, so why would you be any less goth? if you just tone down your appearance and not be so militant and in your face to people. Hmm. And I'm like, huh, well, you make a good point. So 
that's what happened. I, I while I was there, I toned it down a little bit, and even after I left, I didn't put my facial piercings back in because I just didn't feel it was necessary. Right. And mm-hmm. you know, people will see me wearing more than just all black nowadays. Sure. Same but here. It's still yep. a very, very much a big part of my life. Absolutely. You can take the clothes off the goth, but you can't take the goth out of the goth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. you know that's definitely something that I've learned over the past few years as well because. Before I was really into the goth scene, I was a huge juggalo. Okay. Like, I don't know if you know what that is. I do. But, you know, uh, insane Clown yeah, Posse. Yeah, of Insane Clown Posse yep. and, you know, stuff in the underground. Like, that was my first scene that I was a part of. Okay. That's where I first ended up feeling acceptance and love when I was being bullied by, you know, the jocks and the preps in school. Sure, yeah. And so I was, that was the biggest part of my life for a few years. And then... Shortly after I ended up coming into the church, uh, I just I ended up realizing that I had to say kind of farewell to the scene if I was really going to make some changes in my life that needed to be made. Sure. And just only about three or four years ago, I kind of started listening to it again, and it just the love hit me all over again. And so now both you know the Juggalo family and the Goth scene are both major parts of my life now sure because i realized wow well i guess you can't take the juggalo out of me it's still there <laughs> you know it's it's like yeah. me and my affinity for marilyn manson again do i subscribe to marilyn manson's you know lifestyle or his uh his particular religious or philosophical beliefs no but it's a pl- it's a but but there's parts of Marilyn Manson and his critique of the of Christianity and his critique of society that resonates with me. And just because I don't agree with him on everything doesn't mean he's wrong on everything either. And I, and and I would imagine it's the same for you as a you know a part of the Juggalo family. It's not that you necessarily subscribe to everything they say or do, but it's a part of who you are. Yeah, and I mean. This is hard for anyone who doesn't even, who does not listen to them to understand, but sure. anyone who is a juggalo knows what I'm talking about. And that's ICP and their lyrics were kept me from not only killing myself as a teenager, mm-hmm. but helped me in dark times. And actually some of their stuff in their lyrics is what inspired me to start reading the Bible. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was actually baptized in an insane clown posse t shirt. Yeah, and just people who don't listen don't understand it. They think it's horrible, awful, you know, antichrist music. Whereas for me, it did exactly the opposite. Exactly. And, you yeah. know, I can listen to that music and not be inspired to go and chop somebody's head off with a hatchet. <laughs> you know, in the in the same way that I can watch a horror movie. Yeah. And not go do those things. Exactly. <laughs> and and you're right. And 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 I think Christians too often limit. Limit the ability and power of God to work through things that they think are evil. Um, and God, God, God will not be limited. Uh, and so I, I believe God can speak through insound, insane clown po- uh, posse. That God can speak through Marilyn Manson. God can speak through goth just as much as God speaks through Amy Grant, uh, mm-hmm. Michael W. Smith, and uh, well, well, we'll throw in a Skillet while we're at it. While we're at it. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you know, because of, because of my affiliation with the underground scene and because goth is kind of dead around here, uh, I've, in recent years, I've actually become known as Juggalo Jesus at <laughs> That's awesome. and, uh, the mob style monk because of the label that I run with. Which, which also lets me, uh, just briefly, uh, before we run out of time, briefly, I just want to ask you, you have, now you're not officially an ordained reverend uh but you you actually are a minister to the to the goth sub to the goth culture subculture right yeah like i not actually ordained but would be i guess you could say a lay minister yeah Mm -hmm. and and, you know the the bishop at the local diocese bishop stowe thinks what i do is awesome and uh all my priests that i know all support it 100 percent. and actually that's where i got my alp or you know the robe that i wear Mm -hmm. is from one of my priests who just thinks what i do is awesome and he was like you know he was like you need a a look to go with the reverend leviathan name and i'm like okay and so he gave me this alp that's awesome as a methodist (laughs) my heart is strangely warmed (laughs) 
<laughs> and as yeah, a so like, as a Calvinist, I say, way to way to go, uh, priesthood of all believers. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's it's been really interesting, and it's it's funny too because people at shows, like I've had so many people message me after a show, "Hey, are you really a minister? I thought this was just a a, a get up. You know, mm. I thought this was an act." And I'm like, "No, it's not an act. It's very real." Yeah. So so explain how that how that works. Like, how do you? Uh, I know I know you have a book that you've written to kind of explain what you do to Christians, but what what does what does that look like when you're ministering to people in the goth sub- subculture? Like, where, where are you doing uh, it? Uh, what's that look like? Well, like, in, in the scene, in the goth scene and, you know, the juggalo scene, anytime I go to a show, I, I wear the rope. Yeah. Okay. You know, and because that's kind of where it makes it easy to identify me, and anyone who knows me might be able to just up and see me and talk to me. And, and people who don't uh, know you probably ask you, why are you wearing that? <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, when you go to shows, I, I don't go up to people and like, hey, do you know Jesus? Hey, do right. you know Jesus? Is Jesus your Savior? Nobody wants to hear that at a concert, you know, especially at a non-Christian concert. <laughs> yep. And so and I, I understand that because I would be annoyed too, even as a Christian. If I'm trying to enjoy a band and somebody's coming up trying to preach my ear off, I'm going to get annoyed and tell them to get the hell out of my face. Amen. Yeah. And Even if so, I believe, even if I agree with them, <laughs> it's like, get yeah. out of here. Yeah. So, like, the thing with the robe is, like you said, that causes people to ask questions. Yep. So, and that's what I'll do is, and I'll tell them. And, you know, even if they don't hear it right then and there, sooner or later, whether people know me from conventions or shows or because of my music, they're going to end up going on my social media page and boom, you know, I'm always talking about my faith. Yep. So, they're going to end up seeing it sooner or later. Hmm. Uh, And... Yeah, recently I was actually supposed to go speak at Audio Feed, which was a uh, Christian metal festival. Mm. And they were going to have me come there and speak, but due to certain circumstances that kept me out of there, it wasn't able to happen. Mm. But yeah, basically when I talk to people about my faith, they usually don't tell me to shut up. (laughs) You know, they'll just, especially, they're kind of shocked too when they tell me they don't want anything to do with church, you know, screw Christianity. And the biggest reason that they give me is never, you know, almost never the teachings of Jesus, but rather the actions of the church the in America. Yeah. Amen. They've it, all been hurt. Amen. By, it has little to do with Jesus. Jesus. Right. Right. Yeah. So I've kind of made it my goal to try and reverse that. <sighs> yeah. You know, instead of getting mad at people when they say, screw Christianity, I'm not like, well, I'm sorry, then you're going to go to hell. I tell them, <laughs> hey. I know how you feel. I've been there, and I've been close to saying that even not to this day. Yeah. Oh, oh there are you days know? as a pastor, there yeah. are days where I want to say that. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, and that's that's what really seems to get people and to even, even if they don't believe in my faith, they tell me that they think what I'm doing is awesome and we're able to remain friends. And, you know, I try to be a light to them. <sighs> yeah. So awesome, man. That's and that's what I love about uh, being a chaplain in a secular environment, especially with tattoos. And we talked about this on our tattoo episode. But when I, as a younger guy, and I walk into a room of non Christians, especially if I'm wearing my collar, and I go to shake somebody's hand and they see my arm is tattooed, it breaks that barrier of sure, oh, sure does. Shit, this guy's actually a person. Yeah, and it it allows them to have that relationship. Yeah. Uh, which you don't, you can't really share the gospel unless you have a relationship, right? And that's what that's what your your ministry allows for. And your when you wear the alb and when I have my tattoos showing, it allows like let's break down these preconceived notions of yeah. what it means to be a Christian because we're all stereotyping each other. Like mm-hmm. like like people who are not Christian look at Christians in a certain way sometimes for good reason, but they do. And Christians, when they look at goths or juggalos or metalheads or whatever, they look at them in a certain light. But nobody's really getting stopping uh, and getting to know each other before making those preconceived uh, judgments. And so, yeah, tattoos, wearing a robe at a concert. Uh, you know, one of these days, maybe I'll sh- maybe I'll show up at a Marilyn Manson con- con- uh, concert with my collar on. But you know, those types of things are are unique enough that it draws people's attention. They look at you and then they ask the question and they can't be mad at you for sharing something that they asked you to share. 
Right. <laughs> and it breaks yeah, the well, ice. I mean, ironically, the most hate that I've gotten is actually not from non-Christians, but from Christians. Absolutely. You know? Oh, and 150%. Like they, they see pictures of me at these shows because I don't, I don't post stuff like, hey, guess what I did today? I prayed with this person. Or, hey, guess what? You know, I'm doing this. You know, I don't do that kind of stuff. Right. So when they just see pictures of me at concerts, you know, hanging out with people, they're like, how can you hang out with such people? And I'm like, you know, I think somebody asked Jesus the same thing. Oh, that's right. (laughs) You know, it was the Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretty much what Christians in America have become today are a whole bunch of Pharisees. Amen. And it's just like, so you're mad at me for being friends with a non-believer is like, well, what does that person have if they're friends with me? They have a Christian friend. Yeah. They have someone (laughs) who they could actually hear the gospel from and who will actually share with them the love of Christ. You can't witness to people you reject. Yeah. Period. And, you know, and even if, you know, and that's not to say like when I'm making friends at concerts, I'm not like, you know, scheming like, Hmm, who should I convert now? (laughs) You know, it's, it's nothing like that. It's, you know, if if they end up coming to Christ, awesome. You know, that's great. But if not, oh your... well, that doesn't change the fact that I'm not going to be their friend. Right, you're still you their know, friend. I'm, yeah. I'm not their friends to just secretly convert them. You know, I'm their friends, and if my life hopefully ends up shining light on them, then awesome. If not, they're still your friend. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, amen. Uh, this has been a very enlightening uh, conversation, which I, I knew it would be. Um, and I, I just first off, uh, Rev Leviathan, I just want to thank you for coming on the the show and, and kind of making yourself a bit vulnerable, hanging out with a bunch of a couple wacky guys and mm-hmm. talking talking about this stuff. Um, but I just I just really dug what you were doing. You're somebody who's not only saying, you know, not only proclaiming that you're a Christian proudly, which plenty of people do, but you're actually living it and and actually taking the Great Commission seriously and doing it in a way that brings glory to God. Uh, but but not, you know, oftentimes Christians witness to the detriment of God, not to the glory of God. You're, you're witnessing to the glory of God, and I just uh, really commend you on that. And um, I'm actually inspired by what you, by what you do. I really am. Yeah. And I can't but help. I always bring it back to the Westminster Confessions. Mm-hmm. What is the chief end of mankind? To worship God and enjoy Him forever. And mm-hmm. that's essentially that's really what your ministry is doing. You're in you're enjoying God and worshiping Him in everyday life. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah, not a problem. Um, and uh, we will put links, uh, if you can, uh, via Facebook, uh, just uh, just send me like some of the, the links that you would like me to share to your stuff, um, and we'll put links of other things that we talked mm-hmm. about on, on, on here um, as well. Yeah, we'll share your, your uh, social media and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, okay. and uh, so uh, thank you for coming on into our, our uh, pod, uh you know, our POJ casters, our party on John casters or podge casters, however podge you want to say it. Uh, we, I think you've got something podge casters. podge casters. There it is to our podge casters. Um, so for you, uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you've gotten something out of this. We invite you to check out the episode notes as always and um, be excellent to each other. And don't be a jerk. Amen. Amen.